Welcome to Start Canada Podcast, where we interview startup founders, innovators, and thought leaders from the heart of Canada who are challenging the status quo, scaling their business, and bringing new ideas to life. Tune in with me, your host, Margot Miller, to hear firsthand exactly how they did it. Start Canada Podcast is powered by the Manitoba Technology Accelerator and Tech Manitoba and sponsored by Scotiabank. In the next episode, we speak with Amy Tung, founder of I Am Love, a social enterprise that is constantly thinking of new and innovative ways to help our community thrive. Launched in 2018, the primary premise of I Am Love was to create jewelry with meaning, created by youth and sold to raise funds for local charities. On top of that, they've helped many organizations to build, execute, and accelerate their fundraising success. And I promise you when I say that they do it with creativity, style, and unique and modern fundraising methods. Amy's calling has always been around reaching out and supporting others, including smaller local charities who might lack the necessary funding. Spreading love was always her goal. And the organization was growing steadily until it came to a screeching halt in 2020. Now, their focus has changed to helping the community at a grassroots level, taking note of the many vulnerable people, and women specifically, who lost their sources of income during the pandemic. So they've pivoted to a fundraising first model toward providing more support from the ground up. They now work to create employment opportunities and skill building in the post-COVID-19 job market for women especially facing barriers. In this episode, CEO and founder Amy Tung speaks about her personal journey starting a social enterprise, pivoting due to COVID-19, and how her community-minded focus led to genuine personal growth. So if you're curious about what it's like to start a social enterprise, or you've simply been dying to get to know Amy, don't miss this episode of Start Canada Podcast with the founder of I Am Love. Amy, welcome to Start Canada Podcast. Well, well, thank you for having me. I've always admired your work from afar and I'm like, how does she do it? How do you speak so eloquently and with such passion and grace? I'm like, I, I, yeah, so it's an honor to be here. Oh my gosh, you're too <laughs> kind. And it's so funny because I've admired your work from afar and we have some of these like mutual connections, oh. you know? And I think that that's such a, that's such a nice place for us to start this interview from. I'm so excited to dig in because I've had questions for you and now I get to ask them right here. So <laughs> Tell us a little bit, like, you know, we had a bio talking about I Am Love and where, where you started and where you're kind of, where you've gotten to, but give us that journey a little bit. Like, where did you start and why? Oh, that's a tough question. I always have a challenge um, answering that. I, it's, it's always been confusing to tell audience what we actually do because we've pivoted. We've changed mm -hmm. over time since inception, I believe that was 2018. So I guess well, almost three years ago, we started with a fundraising model to give back, to want to spread love. The intentions were clear um, to help smaller local charities and not just to help one, it's to help a different one every single month. And they need to be small. Those who are hustling and bustling, EDs that are wearing different roles, different hats, trying to do this, trying to do that, um, managing different tasks, those are the ones that we want to provide the support. We know that a little goes a long way, $1,500, $2,000, it's is what we typically would raise, um, can support a field trip over the summer to Fun Mountain, when there was Fun Mountain, um, <laughs> to go to folk festivals for the kids. And it's so nice on my end where, oh, 15, 20 kids were able to do that. It paid for their school bus. It paid for their um, juice box. It paid for their lunches that day. And that was kind of like my motivation to continue to do that. And that's what we did. Then, then on top of that, in conjunction with that, we had kid volunteers who would make crystal intention bracelets, um, 10 minutes of their time every month going to different schools grades two through six usually, they would bead bracelets. They And then we would ask them, like, do you know where, where it's going? Do you know what cause we're supporting? And we would ask them, say, our bracelets were $20, $20 profit, and it's going to charity. If you were to take that $20 to the dollar store, how many items can you buy? And they're like, 20 Right. Perfect math. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. And then with like the, um, the 
20 items that you can get, how many different people can you give it to? And they get super excited. They're like, that's 20 people. And then afterwards, you see that motivation that kind of drives them in like, oh, I want to be quicker. I want to make more because if I make two, that's 40 people I can support. Wow. So that's essentially how it all started until COVID hit. Right. And that's where we had to, well, I had to pivot and mm -hmm. had to really think about what we want to do moving forward, mm -hmm. which was not a bad thing because the fundraisers were a lot of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was back to back every month, um, not just with the bracelets alone, but even with our yoga pop-up fundraiser. So that right. <laughs> that was just a yoga yoga pop-up at different locations every month. And it stemmed to a mind and body workshop. We get about 50 to 60 attendees. We featured a local um, yoga instructor or a hit, a uh, hit instructor, whatever it may be, just a sweat event. And then a, a workshop that follows it. And it was a nice pause. It was just... right. A nice pause yeah. for me. And it went back to grassroots again. Mm -hmm. Originally, when I started I Am Love, I'm like, oh, I want to support people who are in crisis, mental health, addictions, um, women who are incarcerated, and all of that stuff. And it, it, it didn't know where to start. So it started with fundraising. And now we kind of go back. To, we went back to the grassroots, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's such an exciting journey already. <laughs> and you've described a lot of different things in there. I think the, you know, the one of the things that comes to mind when you you've seen you in the public eye, you see these great events, like and many, you know, young women in the city and in the province have attended these like yoga workshops and, and many kind of conference days. Mm -hmm. And then I think they probably wonder, how does how did Amy put this into something where she actually can do this, like, uh, you know, for full time for however long, like up to until the pandemic, right? And and make an income for herself at the same time? Because there's you're doing these little kind of fundraising events, right? And there's a ton of work going into them, a ton of your sweat and blood and tears, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Too much. <laughs> how does someone start a, a not-for-profit, a social enterprise and and make sure that it's angled in a way where they can still su support themselves at the end of the day? Hmm. Interesting question. It's, it's a challenge. Um, I went all in with $5,000 cashing out my RSPs because that's when I like quit full time, like just quit my- Yeah, you just did it. I just, I just did it. I mean, that's a different story. We won't get into it. Um, but yeah, I just quit my job and decided to pursue something new, not knowing what that was, which is completely out of my comfort zone. I'm very structured. Like, it has to be this way. I need to know that I'm able to control it, pivot, manipulate it, whatever it may be. Um, and that was hard for me. But it started with having this vision of doing whatever I want to do. What would I want to do now that I don't have to work? I no longer have to complain that I need to go to work. I need to do this. I need to do that. So it became a, put on my exploration hat and did things that were different that yeah. I didn't get to do, which was fundraising, which was giving back, which was mentoring at Big Brother, Big Sisters, mm -hmm. which is teaching kids yoga at West Broadway Youth Outreach, um, facilitating different runs for different organizations and it was a snowball effect one thing led to the other and so forth and so forth and it was a little bit more than I can really process and to take on at that point mm -hmm. when you made the decision to kind of jump in with both feet did you have a backup plan negative no you just no, did it I just did it yeah what do you think that takes like where was your mind at to be able to do that oh uh, being vulnerable, yeah, bold, courage, and grit, yeah. I hmm. think you. I think it's it's life. You have to lead with an intention. As a business and a social enterprise or a charity, they're they're kind of similar. They they overlap in certain ways, but ultimately, if you're starting a ch if you're going to be into charitable work, it's about that social impact. That's the measure, right? The KPIs are different when it comes to measuring a business. Mm -hmm. Business, you your bottom line is most likely money. How can I generate more profits? Increase that. Get it into here. Get into there. Get known. But when you're talking about a social impact, it's like, how many lives do you want to impact? How are you going to impact? How are you creating those jobs? And just same for us. We want to create jobs um, for women who 
are facing adversity. So that may be mental health, addictions, incarcerated, disabilities, whatever it may be. And how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Like we want to scale our business so then we can create more job opportunities, yeah. not to make more money. Absolutely. You need the money to do it, but that's not the first thing that I'm going to be thinking. It's not the root of your passion and the root of your like plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, you know, to that avail, I know that when you were deciding kind of how to register the business, that that, that kind of thought process came into it, right? Like, do we make it a not-for-profit? Do we make it a charity? Do we make it a social oh, enterprise? No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is this is interesting though, right? Like, and I'm seeing Amy's laughing here for those that aren't, aren't watching the visual. Um, how, what goes into making that decision? Being bold to explore different options and not taking, um, not allowing others to manipulate your process. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we come up with these like grandioso like ideas and you would tell someone about it and their response is always so negative. Um, so it's about really staying true to your passion and that intention and knowing what you're trying to create and taking in that feedback but also thinking intentionally, how are you going to solve that? Is it something that's part of the equation or is it something that's not part of the equation? Because mm -hmm. it's happened to me. I've told my family, this is what I want to do. I want to create bracelets. I want to fundraise. First thing for everyone, um, 10 out of 10 of them, how are you going to support yourself? Mm. 10 you out of 10. Make, uh, yeah. 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 Why, why do you want to give back? Um, you're not oh. going to make any money. Why don't you just teach yoga at the Chinese Cultural Center and charge everyone ten dollars a head every lunch hour? And if you get fifty people, um, you get five hundred, and then that can grow and grow and grow. I'm like, well, that's not what I want to do. And I, I gave up on that. Yeah. I'm like, no, I can't. I, I can't talk to people who are not like minded um, to support my passion. I need to talk to people who's in it, whether you're in social enterprise, whether you're in a business and be very uh, niche, be very specific. If you're in jewelry, well, seek out for those individuals, like seek out um, for jewelry businesses. Or if you're into, I don't know, the food industry, talk to them about it, right? Mm -hmm. And gather information, being intentional in alignment of your core values. Yeah. Now, you took all that into account. You're you're clearly very passionate about your business. You know, oh. you can hear it when you speak, which is really exciting, right? And and about the causes that you're supporting. But so now, you know, in your intro, you did explain to us like this was all going in that direction. You had your kind of passion. You told your family what you're doing. You were doing it, and then the pandemic comes and it gives you this opportunity to reassess. What happened at that point? What was it? What have been the decisions you've been making since then? Well, it's actually really easy for me to kind of reassess because you, with the restrictions, no fundraising, no in person. Right. We, we tried like one event and then our second year anniversary, that event. And Th that was it. I'm like, try oh. doing it virtually. You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. We did it virtually. I'm like, okay, well, if we're gonna do it, we have to be intentional again and um, have it kind of like presentable, right? And not yeah. just over the Zoom. Um, a little bit more robust, like he like here, like here. This is <laughs> yeah. great. Um, and doing it that way, and we did. But again, it was such a struggle because everyone were we were feeling differently. Everyone was feeling differently during the pandemic, right? Some were okay with attending in person events some not so much and like oh just forget it it's it's a sign that this is something that I need to put off to the side and we will revisit it when the time is right and look at it we're like 18 months almost two years yeah. into it yeah it's a good thing that you did shelve it for then and, and made that move yeah so now today let's talk about today so you've pivoted more toward helping women facing barriers economic barriers barriers to employment tell us a bit about like what the project looks like now we still have, so we incorporated 2020 December. So it's I Am Love Project Incorporated. Okay. That's our parent brand. Great. Then we have XOXO by I Am Love launching June, July of this year. Um, that came, that stemmed from just, again, um, the finances. How does that run? Legalities. How does that look like? And that's why we had to do a social enterprise for profit. Right. And not a not for profit. And this is, I think, an important <laughs> thing for people to understand the distinction. So what is a social enterprise? In simple terms, uh, a business that has like social impact, 
top of mind. Top, top of mind. Mm -hmm. We want to, I, I can be bold and say, yeah, we want to change the world. We want to do something different. I want to create opportunities for women who are facing adversity. We have so many people who are on EIA. There are so many people who are willing and able to work, but unable to transition into those positions. And I think a lot of organizations, because maybe you have a mental health challenge in your life, they would write you off, right? Mm -hmm. You tell them there's a stigma around mental health still. You go into work, you tell them um, you want to take a day off because of X, Y, and Z. Do you, can you be truthful about it? Right. Most of Asking the time. Asking you to take a mental health day instead of just like a sick day or vacation day. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Some people are not educated. Some organizations are not educated or not equipped mm -hmm. um, knowing how to deal with those situations. And with wh those who have mental health challenges, find it hard to communicate that to the employer. Yep. Like, how would you perceive me, right? Are those opportunities still there for me a week later? Mm -hmm. It's a genuine fear. And and perhaps have merited one in many scenarios. Yeah. I mean, is there like an obvious place that an employer or someone may be seeking, how do I have that conversation from either side of the coin? Is there a good website, a good resource that you know of? Putting you on the spot here, Human I know. rights. It's, yeah. uh, there's something called reasonable accommodation. Okay, so look that up if you're, if you're scratching the surface and this is yes. what you want to start learning about. Yes. Reasonable um, accommodation. I, I mean, I had to, I had to do that for my previous workplace. I didn't know anything about it. And my challenge was I couldn't pick up Alyssa from school. Um, I'm, I'm a solo mom. So I wanted that flex time, that ability to, Hey, I want to, I want to be off at four, at least three times a week. Can, can you do anything about it? And it was a hard no. Yeah. Then I started to like, this is, this is not right. This is not right at all. I looked into it a little bit more and I started to take HR closes and uh, HR courses. And that's when I came up with, um, found out about reasonable accommodation. An employer needs to reasonably accommodate you within your needs. Absolutely. There are some expectations and there's that like um there's that limit to it but for simple things like this they need to mm -hmm. yes and that's it need to yeah they they need to yeah yeah so afterwards I essentially called my HR manager where I'm like hey um so I want to know how you can reasonably accommodate me Oh, they answer the phone and they're like, this is what we can do. So you can have Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can leave at four, um, starting at eight and pick up Alyssa. Perfect. Thank you. You were like, how hard was that? <laughs> but it's like, we're, where do we get the resources from? Where do we get that education from? Right. So we need to start um, be more aware of the resources that we have mm -hmm. around us and even having these conversations, educating each other. And now, you know, you can share right. that message. Like, Absolutely. hey, your employer cannot say that to you, right? Mm -hmm. Use this. What about for people? Because you mentioned this earlier, like there's still a stigma and a fear. So, okay, you use that and you go to them, but now they've labeled you as someone who's kind of causing trouble. Like if they're an employer who wasn't ready to give it to you in the first place, that's still probably what people are worried about in the back of their minds, right? Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, that's still happening. So I can see, I know some peers have talked about it and it, it happens, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the employers are really, really smart and they know how to navigate through that. There's loopholes to that. But again, we just need to do a little bit more research, be a little bit more diligent, yep. um, make, making changes to the mm -hmm. system, talking to your city councilors, MLA, wh wh whoever that may be. But Let's converse. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Same with any any changes that are going on right now. It's about bringing it to the surface, right? Yeah. Bring awareness to it. And I'm glad we're talking about it here today. Now, give us a sense of some of the things that that tangibly people could go to your organization for help with, or when should they engage with you? Like, what tangible things can people do right now to maybe overcome some of those barriers? Or, or what metrics are you guys using to kind of measure how your success is going with your new initiative? Well, we want to be able to provide jobs. The more jobs, obviously, um, the, the better. That's that's what we're there for, right? We want to help, again, transition women to be 
to thrive, to, to be empowered, to contribute to the community. Um, we want to support those who are maybe potentially on EIA and just need that extra $200 to buy a winter coat for their daughter. And that's what we've been doing. So this year, well, not this year. Um, last year, I would say we supported about 10 people. So the scrunchie that was included in our Mother's Day box. Yeah, I could give you one. And so that has a lot of meaning. And that was through a woman who was in crisis. She's about 60 years old. We're chatting on the phone. She's like, I have no sense of purpose. There's nothing I can do. Um I'm, I'm, I'm living in this home with bed bugs and no one's listening to me. I'm not heard. There's, there's no life for mm -hmm, her. Mm -hmm. um, like, cool. Well, may maybe there's something that you can do. She's like, well, I like to, I like to give back a certain, I want to give back, but I'm in a wheelchair. I can't give back. I'm like, well, can you maybe do a fundraising initiative, something like what are wh what do you enjoy doing? She's like, oh, okay. Well, we she lifted off listed off a few things, and one of them was like sewing. So I'm like, okay, sewing wheelchair. You can't go out. Well, how about you create something and then maybe you can sell, and that just sparked something in her. She's like, yeah, I have a serger from like from my um, mom that I haven't used in a long time. I got back to it yet. Um, then I, I'm good like this way. I'm good at that way. If someone could buy me the materials and tell me what to make, I can absolutely do that. And that was like a, a light bulb for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. Well, how about, how can we utilize her? And that's where we came up with the idea of the scrunchie. So we got all the materials. Um, we gave her specs. This is what we're looking for. And we paid her piecework for it. So yeah. at the end of it, she was she was doing like, a, I think it took her about uh, 10 hours to make 150. And um, she was getting paid essentially $20 an hour, like fair wages. Yeah, we when you break it down. Right? Mm -hmm. And again, I don't even know how to explain that feeling. It's It's still very new to me. But just knowing that, you help someone explore their passions and finding their strengths and allowing them to work when they when they can and accommodating to their needs yeah. and making them feel good is such a powerful it, it, it's so powerful for everyone involved oh yeah mm -hmm. it's like i it kind of changed her life yeah yeah yeah, because giving people giving someone meaning is so important in yeah. life right like we all um want to work towards something. It's why many people enjoy work, like, because mm -hmm. it gives meaning to like, to something that they're working on. And people can, some people can find that outside of work in really amazing ways. Some people need like something that, that is theirs that they own, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, that's such an interesting story and really beautiful. How do you identify who to work with? Like, how did you, how did you find a, a lovely lady like this who ended up doing this great initiative? Um, through the peer support work that I do, Okay, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Yeah, yeah, half of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, through that, um, people reaching out, um, others who had supported. Hey, I know you're um, looking for people to employ. Are they a good fit? And that's a, that's essentially that's essentially how mm -hmm. that's a, yeah that's how yeah. that's how it all starts. That's how it all started. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, as far as how it started. You use the word love, of course, in your business. It's right there. That's, you know, the I am love. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of that, I want to know, what does the word love mean to you? Hmm. All right. Well, it goes back to a Bible passage in uh, the Corinthians, and that's essentially what, what it means. It's, uh, it's one of my lessons in life, too. Like, love is kind. Love is patient. It is not envy. It is not boastful. It keeps no records of wrong or right. That's love. It's unconditional and love never fails. And I think that's why giving back, giving back is such a great way to practice or test the word love. Because if you can give back to an individual, not knowing who they are or their path and not expecting something in return, you can do that in all relationships in life. Mm -hmm. Right? Would you not agree? Because, like, I think sometimes even when we get in a partnership and marriage or or family members, we expect them to behave or do certain things. But for people that we don't know, like giving back, we don't care about that. Mm -hmm. And so it's practicing that. There's nothing you're asking for in return. You're saying, yes, yeah, yes. 
Yes. Yeah. So if we're not asking someone on the streets for something in return, why would I ask you for something in return? Right. Like the close people in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we give them such a hard time? So that was something for me to explore. Yeah. And, and that's so that stemmed from like where you were at in personally in life. Yeah. 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 I'm like, what, what is love? And we lack love. We, we as a society. We as society, we lack love. We lack the compassion. We lack the empathy. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone's listening to you say this thinking, yeah, I do. And I want to be better and do better. What should they, where should they look to improve that skill? Because it's, it's very hard, like empathy and compassion and love. I think they're hard to learn now with the pace of kind of our lives and the style of our lives, which is probably why they're lacking for so many people. Where would you point those people? Mm, I think that's a self journey though. Mm. I don't think that's something that can be taught. Mm -hmm. We can be role models and leaders and um, living out those values for you to see, mm -hmm. but you as an individual, you need to take action. Same with your business, right? I can, I, I can tell you how I, how we launch and how we, how we do our marketing and how we do our finances. But if you're going to sit there and not do anything and try to like navigate that on your own, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not the same. It's not the same, um, business. It's not, it's not, it's not the same business model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of that and like, you know, it's not as simple as just like giving someone a tip and they read it and they do it perfectly afterwards. What kind of learner are you? I'm a listener. Okay. I'm very, very curious. I like asking whys for everything. Where, where it like can a little be. kid, like, <laughs> but why? But why? Yeah. Essentially. The sky is blue, but why is it blue? <laughs> yeah. Because of the ocean, but what's in the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get into this rabbit hole, but that's where, like, I get, I have some, that's where I get my answers, though. It's, it's being curious. And I think with business, in life, in mental health, is about being curious about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're diagnosed with, um, um, I don't know, bipolar or whatever it may be, or depression, why? How can you get better? Can it be medication or can it be something else? Now there's a lot about, about um, mind and gut health and that link right. by eating certain foods, to removing gluten. That, um, that helps your mental health, right? It's not just the dopamine, the serotonin and, and all sleep. that. And sleep yeah. and work-life balance and finding that that passion. It's a little bit of everything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that really comes together. And you need to know, you need to know when to use certain tools. Yeah. Right. Amy, have you had good mentors along the way? Like has that been a tool that you've used? Mentors. Um, I think I have great people around me. Yeah. I have you. I know Darcy was here before. Yeah. We talk every so often. Um, Cheryl at Crank. Yeah, so many amazing guests of the show. Yeah, we connect every so often. We talk about, oh, like what's what's happening for you and what what's going on? How can you do this? How can we do that? Um, yeah, they've been they've been an inspiration. And I, I mean other people too, if books, podcasts, by just like listening and being curious, leaning, leaning into like, what, what are they talking about? Because most of the stuff that we're talking about is based on our lived experiences. Right. I'm not giving you the formula on how to run a social enterprise or how to um, sell jewelry. And none of that, right? right. It's, it's different. It looks different for everyone. And depending mm -hmm. on where you're at um, with that area, the execution is different, right? There's no one size um, fits all mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to your point earlier, it's like you have to look inside and figure out what it is you truly want and then kind of move forward on that path. Yeah. I know for you, you mentioned too, like before the show, that part of your journey at one point was realizing that like everything you wanted to work toward that you were taught was kind of like go toward work for money, work for, you know, achievement of a certain status, right? What was that journey like figuring out that that wasn't actually the most important thing to you as a person? It was actually kind of what you're doing now. What did that look like? Yeah, that journey that you must have taken to figure out. Like, right. Because so many of us are in this like rat race, right? Of like, I, my worth is defined by how much money I make or the status I achieve in my company. 
you're, you've changed paths at some point to my understanding. Yeah. I, that part, it needs to be again, a wake up call or even now listening to the podcast or, um, just tuning in. What is your relationship with money? Mm. What does that look like? And asking you that, uh, asking, asking that question to yourself and being really, really honest about it, right? Are you in business to make more money? right? What are you going to do with that money? Why does, why do you value that money so much? What, what does it, what does it bring into your life? Is it because of validation from your parents, from your girlfriend, from, so does it come back to self-worth and really understanding that relationship that you have with money, Mm -hmm. um, is crucial for me. I, (laughs) it, it was, uh, the hard way for myself. I am very stubborn. Yeah. Very, very stubborn previously. Um, and I, I learned the hard, hard way where, okay, I was able to afford that Louis Vuitton or that Tiffany bracelet or whatnot. Ultimately, it came to the point where it was no longer satisfying. Mm-hmm. Those things. Like empty purchases almost. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the materialistic things um, did me no good. And I think it caused more harm than good. Mm -hmm. And it was really evaluating again, like what I said, like, why did I buy all those, make all those purchases? Who would spend $5,000 on a purse? (laughs) Now you look back and you think it's comical. Yeah. Yeah. But however, I need to learn that. Mm -hmm. I need to learn that to be able to sit here and talk about it. Yeah. And be like, this is, this is what happened in my life. This is how, this is how I used to perceive money. And this is money to me now. Yeah. Money is no longer part of the equation. I know mm-hmm. it helps with things, but I, every day I wake up and like, I am abundant and abundant and having that abundance has no relationship with my happiness. Mm-hmm. It's being rich in life is being, having these conversations as yeah. doing what really drives you every single day. Yeah. And it's, a, it's amazing hearing your story too, because I think we don't take enough time to reflect, right? And it's, it takes courage even to just say what you just said, which is, which people might listen and think like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But it's, but how many of us actually stop and do that, right? And do that self-assessment and take that journey toward love, toward finding more meaning in what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really great. And, and I want to get more into kind of where that brought you now today. And you've, you know, you've had some accolades now over the time with your business. And I want to talk about all that, but before we do, we're going to jump into our speed round. Okay. 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 (laughs) So describe yourself in a word or two. Persistent, Mm -hmm. curious, problem solver. Yes. Curious. We got that for sure from what you're saying so far. (laughs) What motivates you? Stories. Mm. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Um, I, I, sl- I sleep through the night. <laughs> you sleep well. <laughs> well, I guess sometimes it, it would be business related yeah. or just like family, mm-hmm. relationships. Okay. Who's been the most influential person for you? Myself. Love that. What is one thing in business that you're so happy you did? Not accepting constructive feedback when you haven't constructed anything. What is most important for your mental health? Hmm. Personally. Exploring options. Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you were wrong about? My previous definition of love. (laughs) Okay, yeah. (laughs) How do you continue to learn and grow? be not by not being an expert Mm -hmm. by thinking that you're you're not an expert and that learning is an everyday thing and be willing and open to that feedback to growth yeah yeah I love that where are you in 10 years Amy someone would donate 16 million dollars to me where I can give back and spend in different countries or different initiatives. And that would be, yeah. I love that clarity. You're manifesting it. Um, (laughs) What does being a leader mean to you? 
vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's our speed round. Oh, that, it seems like that's a little bit more than uh, the right. usual. Right? Well, you know, you were good. So we just kept just oh, kidding. No, yeah. no, that's normal. That's normal. Um, that was good. You had a few good answers in there. Tell me Thank a little you. bit more. Do you remember what you said to some of them? Um, I, I'm wondering, you said about the thing, some of the things in business that make you really happy. The constructive feedback. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, not taking constructive feedback from those who have not constructed anything so it goes back to like parents friends and family yeah if you haven't done it why am I listening to you why am I asking for some sort of validation or asking you to explore this further with me that's what it is right we want validation of our idea and then when the person doesn't get it and says we shouldn't do it we throw out the validate we throw it out because they yeah. didn't get it right but we still put some weight in their opinion yeah throws us off lots right? of weight lots of weight why do we do that Amy goes back into that <laughs> self-awareness. Where does it stem from? Why do you want their validation? We all, we all do. There are loved ones, right? Our parents, we look up to them. They're like mom and dad or whoever. Um, we want them to give us that stamp. Mm -hmm. This is a great boyfriend. This is a great husband. You're doing the right thing, but they're not necessarily the right people <laughs> to go to. Yeah. Right. You haven't, you haven't done it. Have you done a social enterprise? Have you fundraised? Have you given back? No. Well, then I'm talking to the wrong person. Right. And we just have to be persistent and adamant with that and looking and not focusing on the negative, but focusing on the positive. Look for great people like yourself. Look for other um, organizations, EDs from different um, mm -hmm. charities. Like, why are you in it? Why are you doing it? How do, how do you how do you um, find how do you find board of directors? Yeah. What's a unique hack you use to fundraise more? Or whatever the question right? is that you truly are trying to get the yeah. answer to. And again, that's being intentional. Even with like networking, um, every year I reflect back on my previous calendar. Every month every day, where did I spend my time? Um, did I have a lot of meetings with um, random people? Or have I been do, just being, again, intentional with their time? Where was my time allocated in 2020? And reflecting back on that. And mm. then you can see that blueprint of, oh my goodness, like I did so many chambers event, or I would do like many podcasts, or just not doing anything. Well, that's a, it paints you a clear picture of why, where you're at today, mm -hmm. right? Or how, do, how can you pivot? How can you learn from last year um, to carry it over to this year to make it more successful or flourishing? Yeah. I love that tip. It's so tangible, right? People can like listen to this podcast and take that away and go, go flip back through your calendar. That might be your phone. And just give yourself a sense of what you've been up to. And I think you used kind of a term there of like intentional, maybe networking was the term. But I, I think sometimes people feel like it's um, it's like wrong or taboo to be meeting with someone with a, for a reason. Like maybe, you know, I invite Amy for coffee because I want to know what it's like to start a social enterprise. But she thinks I'm just inviting her for coffee to be a friend and maybe that's wrong, right? I think it's it's okay though, right? To, to be clear about your intentions and to and to strategically sometimes meet with certain people. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like why, why can't you just email someone randomly and say, Hey, you know what? I appreciate your business. I've been like watching you over social media. I commend you for your work. Like you've shown like whatever grit or this, yeah. that, like, do you have time for a virtual coffee where like you can share this? Mm -hmm. If they say no, then they say no. Right. What's You've at problem? least given them a compliment. It's probably still a nice interaction. Yeah. yeah. It's business though. It's like, and the right people will connect with you, but yes. you just got to try. Mm -hmm. And like, even with like last year, um, for me was connecting with a lawyer, um, finance. So whenever I was on these events or participating in these events, I was being intentional about that. I need to find uh, um, a corporate lawyer. I need to find someone that can do bookkeeping. And that's, you have those goals in mind, right? Yeah. Not just randomly going into a room. Like, what's the, what's the intent behind it? There has to be some sort of intent. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's interesting, too, because I know in some of the information we shared in advance of sitting here today that when we talk about intent, like part of, part of what you were talking about when you when people are starting a business is to like really put that intent like right into the business plan. What other kind of tips do you have like early on as far as like setting yourself up with a clear kind of baseline to start from? Hmm. I think 
when you've had the opportunity to test out your product, if you are in the product um, world, you've gained that feedback, you've done that environmental scan, you've had like KPIs, like some benchmarks to measure, going back to the processes, going back to fine tune it, Mm -hmm. right? Because even with our bracelets, we created, we started selling, snowball, snowball, but we had to bring it back and see, okay, where we, we kind of just launched to launch, we weren't being intentional. And I think a lot of business, Mm. like, HR is a huge focus where a lot of businesses, we don't talk about HR and like business. Like how we're going to actually build that piece yeah. of our business and how important it is. Right. How often do we talk about like um, building a job description? How do you hire? What are those questions We look try like? not to because it takes a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. And like it's just the HR policy, like your corporate values. And are we looking for that in terms of like hiring? Again, being like having that intent, like when we hire we want you to embody like that giving back, that compassion, that love. You you need to embody those values. Otherwise, I feel like it's not a great fit, right? Mm-hmm. How do you figure that out, Amy, if someone like truly has it in them versus like are giving you lip service in an interview? Oh, you know. You know. <laughs> it's that intuition. It's that gut feeling. Um you know. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the beginning, I remember um, when I was reaching out to different organizations who um, say, oh, like uh, women em- – women empower women, that that tagline, I would reach out to them and they would essentially shut me down. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Yes. We, 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 they don't, they don't do that. Yep. And you'll pick on, you'll pick up on that and you'll learn, you'll learn through your experiences, Mm -hmm. but don't be discouraged. I was super discouraged. I'm like, well, you essentially, you, you, you lied about everything then. You're not even this person that you claim to be. Yeah. You, your organization. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard sometimes. I think when we face that and nowadays with social media and like how easy it is for people to put up a front of whatever they support, but when it truly comes down to it, like not seeing what you want to see, it is disappointing, Mm -hmm. right? With people we want to trust and believe in. Mm -hmm. That's where I think to your point, so it's like, we all have to keep on our path of trying to make a difference of, you know, doing what we're doing and really sharing that. So that's why it's, you know, so great to have you having this conversation Mm -hmm. here today. I know one of the things you kind of mentioned too, when we were chatting in advance was about like finding your tribe or building, building your tribe, like actually, you know, kind of strategically finding the right people to surround yourself with. And I think that comes back to like what you were just describing, right. Of like strategically reaching out to people and kind of, and in doing that, if people are listening, thinking, yeah, like the, you know, five people I surround myself with all the time, or maybe not the five I really want, or that aren't going to help me move my goals further. What -hmm. advice would you have? Well, you're essentially the, I've heard that before. You're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. The most, yeah. And there's so much truth to that. And it goes back to your core values as an individual, right? Like I have, I have my own five core values. Then I allocate a friend or someone, um, a, yeah, a loved one to those values. And those are my go-tos. If I need relationship kind of advice or someone to help me process, I know that's the person. Mm. If I need someone that can help me through um, more business-oriented challenges, then I have my go-to. And again, being having intention, being very intentional with everything. I think that's where your path, your journey, you'll be able to niche, niche it and really tune into what you truly want to do. Yeah. That's really good advice. Again, I think people listening, like this has, this episode I think has so much guidance as far as like people thinking of their own journey and where they want to be and being intentional kind of at all steps along the way. Do you feel like when people kind of come to you about starting a business, Amy, that there's other kind of major things that come to mind outside, maybe more like tangible business tip side of things. Like, are there, are there things that you commonly get asked that you would want to share? How do you get started? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just do it. Just, it, it, it's that simple, but depending on, again, um, the purpose of your business, what is it? Is it a podcast? Okay, well, maybe it's your first step is to allocate the um, the tech stuff, getting the microphone, talking to people like yourself. Hey, Marco, how did, did you do it, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Talking to the right people and not talking to someone who runs a so- social enterprise. Right. That's not intentional. 
right? I can maybe give you other points when it comes to, hey, how do you fundraise? Or the most commonly asked question for myself is, hey, I want to I, I wanna give back to a community, uh, women's shelter or whatnot. How do I go about and do that? I'm like, hey, you just look on their email. Yeah. Go talk to that actual shelter. Yeah. See what they need. Exactly. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. just talk to them and tell them, um, this is what you want to do. This is your initiative. And that's how you can get started, essentially. Yeah. Once you have that kind of, so you now, Amy, you've got your mission. It's very clear at this point. How do you stay engaged over time? Like, especially when you face hurdles. Think of the last year, for example. How do you stay engaged with your mission? I think um, Darcy said it very well. So he mentioned something about not being jaded. Mm. Going back to your mission. For me, my mission statement is not just there for fluff. It is how I live day to day. Mm-hmm. And that is how I perceive the business on a day to day basis. Yeah. And it's it's if it's um, a business challenge or if it's a business idea, I go back to it. Are we being intentional? Is it come from a space of love? Are we leading with conviction? Or is it fun? Ultimately, you, I have to check off those four things in order for me to say, yeah, this is a go. This is what we're mm-hmm. doing. Because it helps you filter out the stuff that you shouldn't be focusing on because it's not part of that mission. It's not part of that plan. And I think that's where sometimes we take, as entrepreneurs, we take on too many um, roles or t- take on too many different initiatives, but it doesn't fit in, right? And then you become, oh, I'm so burnt out. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Well, that's because you weren't doing the right thing. You're yeah. straying off path. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing these different initiatives that don't really correlate to your business essentially, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of ties into that self-worth part. Like I think every entrepreneur needs to give them a bottom line of how much you're worth. Say you're worth $100 an hour, then focus on those $100 an hour tasks. Mm. Whatever that does not fall within that benchmark, you need to learn to delegate out. Or maybe it's delegating or maybe it's not doing it. It's not the right timing, but that's for you to assess. And that's why you're entrepreneurs where we love to problem solve. That's what it is. You're you're leading with an infinite mindset, right? Being a visionary thinker and knowing that business is a huge math puzzle equation, right? And there's different ways of getting to it. How did you learn to say no, Amy? Oh, how did I learn to say no? Because that's what you're describing. And it's very hard to do. To confidently say no to things that don't match. You have to do it enough where you're seeing the results. And then you'll be like, why was I not doing this earlier? Mm. But you need to give it time. Acknowledge those results even. Yes. Right. I think that's the hardest part because... Saying no once is not going to create that ripple effect um, versus mm-hmm. saying it 10 times. You'll see the result. Again, it'll come back to that really narrow vision of yours. This is the path. This is the path. And you'll be like, oh, things are a lot easier now. Yeah. yeah because you're saying no to those things. Yeah. And again, having those values, being intentional about it, checking it off every time. Mm-hmm. Amy, you started a social enterprise with like $5,000 in your pocket to start it and to put toward it. And you've raised over $50,000 for many different charities, like along the way, many different people you've supported. You've pivoted since then. What does it feel like when I say that to you? I can say that I'm, I'm proud. Yeah. I'm proud. I, that's something that I'm still working on. Um, where allowing yourself to be proud. Yeah. Cause it, it comes, there's also perception to like, we, people will question, oh, why is she doing it? And you, you worried about that, right? Like, no, these are my intentions. And that's why I'm like, I'm sticking to my values. This is who we are, where I'm not straying off path. And the things that we do, the things that we put out, it needs to be this way for, mm-hmm. for the time being for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you have like pretty close attention to detail on kind of how things go out. 
Um, for the, for the most part, yes. Mm -hmm. For the most part, yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, that's still something, yeah. Like I said, it's, um, something that I'm still working on and it's nice to see community members reach out, even just like the Asian community, they reach out there and they tell me, we're proud to have you in the city. We're proud to have a Chinese Canadian that that's doing good and that's getting recognition for their work. I'm like, never really thought of that. Yeah, Yeah. because you weren't doing it for that reason in the first place. So you didn't take the time to kind of think about that impact to other people watching you. Yeah, yeah. And you've had some pretty nice accolades now at this point, you know, to to that avail. You know, the Manitoba 150 medal most recently, the Future 40 for Manitoba through CBC, which is a great one and features amazing people every year. And more, I think, like, you know, there's, I can look at my, I've got a (laughs) list of all kinds of things. Future leader of Manitoba finalist, Winnipeg Blue Bomber, community hero, other things. So have you, now you're starting to realize that other people are noticing the work that you're doing and really appreciating you for it. Yeah. Yeah. But my ultimate wish is one day, maybe in that 10 years, um, headline would be changing the workforce or women employment, um, and us playing a vital part in that. Mm -hmm. I want to see that happening. Again, you've set an intention. Oh, Which yeah. is so clear, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Manifesting it. <laughs> right. You mentioned uh, too earlier that like about learning and how you're kind of a quiet learner. And I know that you, you're you not a fan of public speaking even, which is funny because I've got you here, which is kind of, it's different though. We're not in front of like a big crowd, right? But yeah. um, do you think that's held you back at all? I think so. It, I am, I'm still learning. I'm still kind of getting comfortable in these spaces. This makes me super uncomfortable right now. Oh, well, you're doing so good. Thank you. <laughs> but it's also a learning opportunity for me to practice, right? I have yeah. I have to do it myself in order to fine tune it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's a huge learning curve for me. But yeah, this makes me uncomfortable. All, 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 all of this, all, all of this. We brought it. you in the full studio with all the lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, to your point, you're you're facing those barriers head on, which will just help you to continue to grow and be, you know, have more skills in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I need to lead by example. Mm-hmm. If I'm showing women that it is possible, I, I, I've i been there. I've been through those cracks and I've had to, I had to find my way up to the surface again, which mm-hmm. was the hardest thing ever. I know even when I first started this, there was there were there were times where it was um, mac and cheese and it was two days of meals there. Yeah. I was so passionate. I'm like, I was so invested in this. I'm like, nope, I have to, it has to be allocated to donations, whatever it may be. That's what I'm gonna do. And there's no ifs, so's or buts. And right. I, I I, I did that behind closed doors. Parents said no, none of that stuff. Cause I know they would be like, no, you go find yourself a full-time job. You're no longer doing this. So it had to be really like hush, hush. Which is even harder. Cause now you're dealing with something that's hard and you're dealing with it really by yourself. Yeah. The entrepreneur journey is a lonesome journey for sure. Mm-hmm. Cause everyone's on a different path. What you think, how you envision your business, it's hard to articulate that to someone, right? Even speaking about it today, there's bits and pieces that are, um, there's gaps within the story, right? right? Even if you're telling, giving advice to other, other people, again, it's take what you need, leave whatever you don't. Mm -hmm. You have to try to apply it to your business some way, somehow, maybe, right? Take it with a grain of salt and yeah. not take it so literally, right? Yeah. What worked for me does not mean that it's going to work for you. Yep. Well, and that's why we keep doing more and more episodes, right? Because everyone has little tidbits that are going to work for you, yeah. are they going to help. But one full episode with one person is not necessarily like every tip that you would possibly use for your own business and your own yes. journey. Right. So you do have to your point, you have to kind of pick and choose those pieces. And that's okay. I think like you don't have to take every piece of advice from one person. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think ultimately at the end of the day, also it comes down to that person. Right. You can give the formula to someone else. This is how you develop the podcast. But no one's no one's going to be Margot Miller. Yeah. No one can replicate that. That's you. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. And it's a fun journey we've been on too here. <laughs> so Amy, you do, you did mention very briefly that you have a, a kind of sub brand that's just kind of launching XOXO by I Am Love. What is that all about? What's the next steps for that side of things? Ooh. So I Am Love was more so of the manifesting, be intentional, empowering you, um, believing in yourself, that kind of aspect. And I think the XOXO was the other other personality of Amy Tung okay. was more of the bold courage and um, embodying being resilient. And that's a recovery story. So every jewelry represents a different person's recovery story. So as each piece is created, a story is being told as each piece is worn, um, a story is being sh shared and being heard. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to share the voices, tell, tell stories of other people, other women's like recovery journey and yeah. what inspired them to move on and continue to fight, fight, fight and push forward and cr create a path for themselves. Yeah. And that's so impactful. I feel like now more than ever, we want to understand like where our products come from. What is the story behind them? I want to wear, you know, the scrunchie I have from <laughs> I Am Love. And I want to be able to like sit at the dinner table and say, oh my gosh, can you imagine the woman who made this and this is her story? Like to me, that's so fun. And I think to so many people listening, we care more and more nowadays as we have this ability to disseminate stories, we care about the stories behind the businesses that we're supporting. And you're right at the heart of it. And it's really amazing what you're doing. So you. Amy, if people want to find you and what you're doing, where do they go? Um, our website, so imloveproject.ca or xoxoimlove dot com, but that's still, <laughs> there's no landing page to that yet. Um, <laughs> very soon. Yeah, very soon. Social media. Um, again, I am Love Project. Awesome. Yeah. Amy, that's our show. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you. <laughs> if you're looking to start or grow your big idea, catch more episodes like this one right here. Be sure to comment below, follow us on social, and don't forget to subscribe to the show. Just click the subscribe button here below and every two weeks we'll release a new episode with inspiring conversations and tips just for you. Thanks for watching.